And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, with uh, Jay Goldberg. He is the Interim Director for Ontario for the Canadian Taxpayer Federation, just talking about kind of the state of uh, fiscal policy uh, in Ontario uh, in the weeks ahead of the Ontario Budget 2023. Jay, uh, I know the CTF has all been a great advocate for many, many years, certainly when I was in, in government as well, about uh, deregulation, cutting red tape. Uh, What's your agenda for Ontario for that? You know, I, I'm really pleased that uh, the Ford government has created uh, a ministry. Um, you know, we're not always looking for extra ministries to be created and more, uh, you know, uh, civil servants and such, but but at least to give clear attention to the issue of red tape. And, you know, I hear from business owners, small business owners all the time. Actually, in many cases, they're saying, you know, uh, high taxes is making it difficult to do business, but regulation is making it even more difficult. And so we've heard that in so many different industries. And so uh, I think the Ford government's done is doing well uh, to try to cut red tape. I've certainly spoken with people in the government who I know are pursuing some ambitious projects there. But, um, you know, it's very clear that we've had governments for too long in Ontario that have been adding regulations, adding red tape. And all that really does is drive businesses out of the province. And so if we want to make Ontario a, a competitive place to, to attract businesses, of course, we have to have a competitive tax rate. We have to have, uh, you know, competitive uh, electricity rates and such. But you have to make sure it's an environment where companies are willing to move to and don't have to fear that they're just going to get caught up in red tape for months or years before actually accomplishing what they want to do. And so I, I commend the Ford government for, uh, you know, they very clearly have made genuine efforts towards reducing red tape. I think that's a really good thing. Uh, obviously, there's more work to do. Um, but the fact that we have a strong minister who is on that file, it, it's good to see. Excellent. Um, I'm going to bring you back to about the 30,000 foot level a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about the debt crisis, because this is something that is an overhang, it's, it's uh, still with us, of course. Uh, why does it matter for the average or ordinary Ontarian that we talk about debt reduction? Well, it matters because it's a question of whether you'd be preferring to send money to bondholders on Bay Street or whether you'd rather build new hospitals or have lower taxes or, or put more money into schools. I mean, it really is a trade-off. We are spending over a billion dollars a month in debt interest, as I said before, and with that money, you could be building a state-of-the-art hospital every month here in the province of Ontario. That's a heck of a lot of money, and that's a lot of things that we're sacrificing. Uh, and so, again, our debt here in Ontario, $475 billion. That's the largest, uh, and when you're talking about sub-sovereign governments in the world, uh, it's very dangerous, more than California, more than uh, you know any other comparable uh, area. And so... I think people need to realize that running deficits, uh, adding to the debt year after year, it has consequences. And the consequence is that we are currently spending $14.5 billion on debt interest. And if we didn't have to do that, you could cut the HST in half, the provincial portion. You could, as I said, build all those new hospitals. You could invest more into schools. And so it really is a trade-off. And if you look at other provinces like Saskatchewan, like Alberta, that have a lower debt burden in terms of debt to GDP and in terms of individual uh, debt, if you were to break it down per person, uh, they have more money available to spend on priorities that taxpayers have. And so that's the ultimate uh, conclusion here, is that here in Ontario, we're spending about $14.5 billion a year on debt interest. If we, for example, had something similar to Saskatchewan in terms of the debt burden, uh, we'd have an extra $7 million a year to put towards the priorities of Ontarians. But we don't have that now. Uh, we also know the Ford government, and I commend them on this, has been open and honest that for every 1% increase uh, in, in the uh, uh, interest rates that the Bank of Canada does, that's $650 million extra that we're spending on debt interest a year. And so that is soaring. And the fact that interest rates are going up that's all the more reason to be very concerned about how much debt this province is taking on. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I think the, uh, I think you're right, and it, it, but the, the the challenge has been obviously is to uh, convince uh, whatever the electorate, Ontarians, Canadians, uh, that uh, that debt 
which is a kind of, it's such a big number now, it's almost impossible for people to fathom how much our debt is and how, why that matters. And I think uh, that's incumbent on, on political leadership to make it a, a story that is still worth telling uh, so that uh, people will support uh, some, some measures that will deal with it. We're just gonna take another break though, Jay.